Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. Evening. So, you enjoying that cocktail? I am. All right. Excellent. So, what what are we drinking on tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Every time you say it that way, I think of my mom's favorite joke. Yeah? Yeah. Like, it should be, of course... What are we drinking tonight? Right. Right. My mom's favorite joke is, and I'll see if I can put it together. Um, some like a, the, you know, they're this southern couple is at a, um, you know, some kind of fancy retreat thing. You know, all expenses paid, one of those like Sands type resort or whatever. Yeah. And uh, there's another couple there, and the um, the southern bell, <laughs> <laughs> the southern bell says, oh. Hey, how are y'all? It's nice to meet you. Where y'all from? And the lady responds, the prim, proper, not southern <laughs> lady, yeah. says, uh, well, where we're from, we don't end our sentences and prepositions. <laughs> and the southern bill says, oh, I am so sorry. Where y'all from, bitch? <laughs> 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 that's good <laughs> <laughs> so oh. what we're drinking is the scoff law i think uh, i think we should make the scoff law the new signature cocktail of the liberty mike podcast it's definitely a contender it has the right name yeah <laughs> agreed <laughs> it was a it was a um prohibition era cocktail it's yeah. it's actually um it's more more parts than i usually like to go in for yeah. it's a uh, I, I like to stick to two and three part cocktails like Simplicity is just better. Absolutely. Um, this one's four parts, so I, I, yeah. I took one step beyond what I'm wow. comfortable with. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, it is whiskey, of course, because all the best cocktails have whiskey as a base. That's not true. I actually and, like gin cocktails, but well, I prefer whiskey cocktails, and I will say that that this has a very whiskey flavor to it, Good. which I like. Mm-hmm. I added an extra, I added a little bit of extra whiskey because if you if you make it the way. Um, the recipes come out. You can't taste any whiskey. Well, that's no fun. But I drink good whiskey, and so I want to taste it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so other than that, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a sour. So it's yeah. uh, it's lemon juice, um, whiskey, uh, dry vermouth, and um, the uh, the grenadine. Wow. Yeah, like real pomegranate grenadine, though, not that crappy cherry juice stuff that you <laughs> get at Walmart or whatever. Nice. And. Yeah, so it's, it's it's one of my favorites. It's a little sweet, but it's got that sour cut in it, and and then you you give it a little lemon twist on the top. You get that that yeah. citrus oil across the top, and, and like I say, it's got a nice right whiskey flavor to it. So it okay. it holds up. I'm I'm glad you like it. Like I said, it's one of my favorites, and we'll probably be drinking it for a little while because yeah. I bought grenadine, and it just doesn't keep that long. <laughs> so, so this is going to be a regular then. <laughs> yeah, it, at least until the, the grenadine, grenadine goes gone. bad or it disappears. One of the two. Nice. Um, so I thought, well, actually, here's a here's an interesting intro. I don't know if you saw the news, but there is a uh, 4.75 trillion dollar budget proposal Ouch. out there. Um, so once again, the Republicans prove that they're in for small government by being the biggest spending government in the history of mankind. Now, is this Trump's budget, or is this one just proposed through? I mean, Trump sets the bu- proposes the budget to Congress. Am I right? Well, that's how it's worked for a while. Yeah, I, because <laughs> that, I mean, I that's always, not how it's supposed to work. Well, I know it's not how it's supposed to work, but that is how it how it's done right now. Right? Yeah, these days, for whatever reason, the president presents the budget. Actually, I, we know the reason. The reason is because Congress doesn't want to take any responsibility for anything. Exactly. Um, we pay them uh, $168,000 a year to go up there and do nothing. Yeah. Um, or whatever the minimum is, I forget. Something, Something like, like that. Something like that, yeah. Um, so, and actually, uh, was it last? I guess it was, it was Trump's first year in office. Uh, I went to a town hall for our, uh, our local federal representative. Mr. The, Byrne. Yes, <laughs> and, Mr. Uh, Bradley Byrne. So I went to the town hall, and it was it was right after Trump had been elected, and so it was popular. Yeah, and especially in this 
as close as we get to a city here in this part of, well, of we're, Alabama. We're, we're a large county, though. Like, yeah. There's a lot of people. Well, here. and he had he had uh, meetings in various cities throughout the county. He did. The, but the one here um, yeah. at the city hall uh, was packed yeah. um, to the point that they weren't letting other people in. I was standing in this hallway outside where I could hear, yeah. but I couldn't really participate in any way, and he should probably be glad. Um <laughs> Because somebody brought up a question about the budget at that time. This was the, I guess this would have been the 2017, fiscal year 2017 budget. Yeah. Um, and he said, well, we're still waiting on President Trump to bring that budget to us. And I said, that's not his job. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> and I said it loud enough that I'm pretty sure that they heard it in there because it <laughs> set me off. Yeah. And at least the people in the hallway all looked at me and giggled. But uh, <laughs> there was no response from... From the from hall. the inside, yes. <laughs> yeah, <there's... laughs> from the man speaking, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm not sure, but uh, I think that this is Trump's budget. The he, but here's the here's the punchline yeah. of the whole thing is that he says, but they'll have the budget balanced in 15 years. <laughs> so we'll just spend you know about a trillion more than our revenue is. Yeah. But don't worry, it'll be... <laughs> in 15 years we'll get it back. Two presidents. At least from now, yeah. remember. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so I, I don't, and this is why, actually, that's actually a fair transition right there. Yeah. This is why um, any country, including Kim in North Korea, has a reason not to trust the United States government. <laughs> yeah. Because we do all this through presidential fiat now, so every time we change presidents, if the new one's got a new idea, then... That's what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So There's no consistency there. Right. And we don't do it properly. We don't make treaties through Congress anymore like we we're supposed to. Yeah. Um, so now the president makes a treaty, but they call it something other than a treaty so that they're not, they don't feel like they're actually bound by the Constitution. Yeah. And then um, nobody signs off on it. It's not really official. And since it was done through presidential fiat, then the next president can undo it through presidential fiat. Exactly. Just like Trump did with the Paris Climate Accord. Yeah. Because it, it wasn't technically a treaty, right. so they didn't bring it through Congress. And if they'd done it correctly, if people were really that concerned, if yeah. they'd have done it correctly, then President Trump couldn't just undo it. This is very true. Um, so as long as we're on that, I guess we're, you know, we, we had a general order for this and we're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Just roll with it. Man. <laughs> yeah. um, the, uh, so Trump met with uh, Kim Jong-un a couple of weeks ago now. Yeah. We'll get back to our schedule at some point later in this podcast. But um, he met with Kim Jong-un and uh, it appears that John Bolton managed to submarine the meeting. Yeah. Um, so... The now I'll say a few things. So Trump walked away from the negotiations. They both he and Kim said that they were productive. Yeah. Uh, frankly, just the fact that they're talking, well, I, I think is productive. And and Trump even came out and said that he was that I mean that there was no ugliness because you know how Trump is. If if they had had like a falling out, everybody'd know about it. Yeah. I mean he's he's not the type to play nice mm -hmm. so i mean that it was it was still a productive meeting from what i can tell yeah and just the fact that they're talking is a win oh yeah as far as i'm concerned um the it just just the negotiations regardless of the outcome well, maybe yeah. not regardless of the outcome but um even if they don't come to a complete agreement negotiations make the world a safer place as far as i'm concerned absolutely and uh, so I, I think that it was positive all the same. Now, the, the real and, – and I'm glad that Trump can walk away from a deal that he doesn't think is a good deal. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate yeah. that. Absolutely. Um, now, <laughs> I think that maybe it was – based on what I've read about this, maybe it was Kim that should have gotten up and walked away. <laughs> uh, because my understanding is that the sticking point is that they were – that the U.S. was insisting on like a real front-loaded deal, yeah, where the North Koreans gave up everything yeah. for nothing, essentially, until they proved that they'd given up everything, and then the U.S. would would, would do, give up some would things. Do right? our, so, yeah. yeah, they were demanding, uh, and as I understand it, this is mostly like that they were demanding complete denuclearization. 
yeah. before any sanctions relief would happen. Yeah. And that even that was, that's not something that's likely to ever happen. But no. um, I, I suspect that the talks at least would have gone on longer, except that, again, my understanding, and this is based on a South Korean source, yeah. is that Bolton came in and then added additional demands on top of that. Yeah. Um, essentially asking North Korea to open up their entire country to who knows how many inspectors to go look at anything and everything. And, yeah. you know, who's going to agree to that? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's the, um, and we can come back around to this too. It's the same kind of thing. That's the reason that the Red Cross is refusing to work with the United States government in, in Venezuela. Really? Uh, yeah. Were you not aware of that? I don't think so. I don't All think... Right. Let me make a note. We will we'll definitely <laughs> we will come, address this come too. back to that. <laughs> All that's, right. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so we were, you know, we were trying to tell them essentially that they needed to, to do everything that we wanted. Yeah. And then once they had proven to us completely that they had done everything that we wanted, then we would start doing things that they wanted. Yeah. And, well, and that's not how deals work. I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to get a deal that way. Yeah. I, I agree. And like I said, I don't think that they would ever come to an agreement about complete denuclearization. No. Um, and, I mean, and you wouldn't expect them to. I mean, they're they're too far down the process to to walk away from that. They, I mean, they've seen what's happened in other countries. Yeah, I think that they, the, the um, example that we have given them is that that is the only thing that protects them from a U.S. invasion. Yep. Absolutely. Um, you know, you unfortunately, look at, I mean, like I say, I mean, that's I don't condone that in any way. Mm -hmm. But but that that is the that's the picture we've portrayed. Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, you look at Gaddafi. He's uh, the prime and, example. And ended yeah. his nuclear program, and there's no Libya. Le I mean, there is a Libya left, but it barely. Yeah, I mean, it's a failed state now. I mean, yeah. he's definitely long gone, and nobody wants to go out the way that he did. No, um, well, and, Saddam Hussein as well. Same oh, yeah. thing in Iraq. Um, I mean, we had these stories about the the um, weapons of mass destruction. That was the reason that we were going back in there. But yeah. um, we already had intelligence come out later. We already yeah. had intelligence that they destroyed all of their weapons of mass yeah. destruction, all the chemical, biological, and nuclear weapons years before we went back in there. Yeah. And it was known. Yeah. It was known by our well, government when we went back in there. Absolutely. And I mean, it was all just an excuse. And going back to the deal with Libya, like... Gaddafi did everything he could to help us after 9-11. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, he was he was in our corner because he didn't want the terrorists any more than we did. Right. I mean, he had everything to gain by helping us and did so and still met the same fate through our hand. Yeah, and that, we were trying to do the same thing to Assad. Assad oh, helped us out are, after 9-11. We are too. working hard on Assad as well. I think that we're... We're backing up on that a little bit. Well, we're having to because of Russia. If it wasn't for Russia, well, that's true. I mean, that's the only thing that saved Assad is yeah. is Russia. And I'm not I'm, and I'm not saying Assad's a good guy. I mean, he's probably a butcher, but it's still his country. He was elected mm -hmm. to yeah. power. I mean, well, and he, I mean, he's he and Gaddafi both and uh, were and are. Are and were, as appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, secular dictators. Yeah. I mean, you can call them dictators. I mean, they were. They are. I mean, but uh, secular dictators that you know are actually much more Western than anything that we could replace it with. Oh yeah. I mean, in Libya right now, they're completely broken down. That's a. Oh yeah. I mean, they have open slave trades there. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, it's, they, we, it, we have not things modernized are not Libya. better there. Yeah. yeah, we have not modernized Libya, and you know, it, as uh, as Dave Smith always says, at least Assad is a Western educated secular leader who gets up and shaves his chin every day and wears a three piece suit. <laughs> I mean, and the only thing that would come in his place yeah. is going to be uh, a you know radicalized theocratic leader because yeah. that's who we're supporting. Oh yeah, uh, you know those are the groups that we're supporting over there. Um, I don't want to get too bogged down in, in Syria. We got a lot to cover tonight. <laughs> uh, there's so many things to to go over, and uh, that wasn't even on the list anywhere. <laughs> things. Funny that we how to this talk happens, about. by the yeah. way. Rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, so, you know, back to the the North Korea thing. There's yeah. there's plenty well, of reason that he would never want to give up his nuclear weapons. Absolutely. Well, he's seen what happens when you do. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's kind of the point we we're trying to make. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, as, as far as the trustworthiness of the U.S. government and the problems with the way we handle agreements as it is now with the, the president handling it all. Now, the president was supposed to negotiate these things. Yeah. Um, that was the that was the original purpose of the president. The president was a figurehead yeah. of the states as a collective to foreign governments. That was yeah. the whole purpose of the president. He was the chief diplomat. Yeah. And he was the commander in chief when Congress had declared war. In times which of we war. Haven't, yeah, yeah, which we haven't done since World War Two. Exactly. So when um, Trump says that you know that he's the commander in chief and he can move troops to to down into Venezuela or into Syria oh, or anywhere else because he's the commander in chief and that they shouldn't be questioning what the commander in chief decides to do with the troops because that's his purview. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. As long as we've declared war. Exactly. Which we haven't Which we again haven't. since World War Two. And good luck, by the way, getting that through Congress. Can yeah, you that imagine? would never happen. There's no way that they'll go on record with any of this. Well, yeah, no exactly. Way. But and that's the whole reason we shouldn't be doing it. I, I would say if, if Congress can't go on record supporting a war, we don't need to be fighting it. And and you're not going to find the war that you're going to get Congress approval for. At least not a current war. No, no. Uh, well, they're too afraid that they might lose their seat. Yeah. That's, exactly. that's the reason for it. They don't want to. Yeah. They yeah. don't want to be on record with but any if, opinion, because any opinion can turn voters against them. But if it was a war that was truly worth fighting, they like World War II, they could get it through Congress. I mean, even that one's kind of questionable. But at least you can point to Pearl Harbor and say, "Well, we were absolutely." Well, yeah, attacked. I mean, after Pearl Harbor, I mean, it was kind of hard for us not to get involved in that. I mean, yeah. you're not taking our island. Any war that is worth fighting, there's not going to be any question about. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's They kinda, don't need to worry about losing votes that's kinda because my point, though. the entire country would be on board. Exactly. If it's questionable, we shouldn't be there. Exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, again, back to North Korea, this whole problem with how we're negotiating, mm. um, who's in control of negotiations with the president making all these decisions and, you know, approving them by calling them not treaties, yeah. uh, anything but a treaty, the Iran <laughs> deal... And that's a good example, and that's a reason again why Kim wouldn't wouldn't engage. I don't think. I mean, it's going to be hard to convince anybody to come to an agreement with the U.S. government yeah. because you know Iran came to an agreement with the U.S. government, which I think. I mean, I'll go ahead and put my bias out there. I think made the world a safer place. Yeah. Now, I don't think that Iran was really the problem in this whole thing. I mean, <laughs> but I I think that the U.S. The U.S. government is the problem in this because we have this idea. I mean, you've you've heard the Wesley Clark clip, and I, I recommend anybody go out there, get on YouTube, and type in Wesley Clark Seven, yeah. um, where uh, General Wesley Clark is on was it Frontline or something? I can't yeah. remember. Um, and he's talking about the the memo that came down after nine eleven, talking about how the U.S. government was going to. Uh, uh, initiate regime change that topples seven governments in five years yeah. and throughout the Middle East. And we've hit most of them. Like, yeah. It know, took a little I, longer than five years, but they're yeah. knocking them down. Yeah. I mean, it was Libya, Somalia, Sudan, uh, Iraq, Iran, hmm. Afghanistan. I mean, I don't remember. Yeah, that. it was. But yeah, it was a it was a hit list and we've hit most of them. Yeah. So go to YouTube. Look up Wesley Clark 7. If you haven't heard this clip, you need to. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's an important thing to know about our government's plans. Yeah. So, like I said, I think the U.S. government was really the dangerous party um, that was was subdued by the Iran deal because it took away any excuse we had to go to in there. To go over there, yeah. And uh, by all accounts, they're still abiding by the deal. Yeah. Even though we've left it, but not everybody yeah. has, thankfully. Yeah. Um, but that's a, that's a good reason for North Korea not to engage in anything that would put them at risk exactly. with the U.S. because they can't be certain that we would stick to the deal anyway. Yeah. Any deal that they make. Um, going, <laughs> jumping uh, <laughs> from there to the Venezuela thing because ah, yes. the, I, I do, the Red Cross bit is interesting yeah. um, because we keep hearing, and we've addressed this before in a previous podcast, but yeah. um, the idea that that Maduro is starving his people and not allowing any aid into the country is just a lie. Yeah. It's just a lie. <laughs> He's allowing aid into the country. 
<laughs> He's just not allowing aid into the country from a country that has vowed to remove him from office well, and has used aid in the past to, under Elliot Abrams, actually. Yeah. Elliot Abrams has used humanitarian aid as a, as a way of smuggling in arms, um, arms for uh, resistance groups. Yeah. Exactly. In the past. Yeah. And he's not wanting to turn the aid over to Maduro anyway. He's wanting to release it to the guy we recognize Mm -hmm. as the leader, who is not, by the way. Yeah, at least they've changed. uh, I mean, they were saying on the news that that most governments were recognizing Guaido as a leader as the real president of Venezuela. And and they have now finally changed it to most Western governments because (laughs) it became clear in the UN when they were talking about it uh, that out of the 190 something 190 yeah. plus governments they're like 50 or 51 of them yeah. are have recognized Guaido <laughs> that means that the not rest even, have it <laughs> yeah not even a third yeah. uh, have recognized Guaido just over a quarter of the of the governments represented at the UN have recognized Guaido so yeah. it's not so cut and dried as they were trying to make it out to be yeah um, but remember, stuff's still going on down there because it's kind of falling out of the news. Oh yeah. Um, but the the thing about the aid packages is that the Red Cross has refused to to the International Red Cross has refused to work with the United States government because they don't think that our our um, intentions are pure, <laughs> as it as it were. Yeah. Uh, so, Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of our our impure intentions, um, they had a a, a massive blackout. Yeah. Um, Two weeks ago, I guess it was. It was not long after our last podcast that yeah. it, that it happened. It may be less than that. Probably about a week ago, I think. Something like that. I don't know. It was recently. So yes, they had major blackouts, um, to which Maduro government was blaming the United States. Yeah. And uh, there's some evidence that he wasn't wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, now this is actually going back really deep the the group that we talked about in the first venezuela podcast uh, that guaido was a member of that got the training in serbia about how to overthrow a government from the um the uh, national endowment for democracy funded group etc yeah this was actually part of their memo back in 2000 whenever it was 2000 like five three is what i was thinking but that might not be right anyway yeah whenever it was this was something that they had talked about is that you know using um a failure of infrastructure specifically uh a (laughs) A failure of electricity (laughs) and specifically at the um at the particular dam the hydroelectric plant that went down um would be far more beneficial to a a uh, um a resistance movement or an opposition movement than anything else could be as far as turning the people against the, the, government. the existing government. Wow. Um, now, not only that, uh, but um, there was, uh, was it one of the, Pompeo, Bolden, Pence, yes. one of these guys that's been like out there, like really fighting Heavy on this, this stuff, yeah. um, said something about uh, them about to suffer a couple of hours before it happened. Um, and then Rubio uh, tweeted uh, about 20 minutes after the power went down, yeah. um, something about how the uh, the backups r- had failed as well. And that was before they the had. Venezuelans knew that the backups <laughs> had failed. Yeah. So yeah. Definitely uh, some questionable yes. stuff going on yeah. here. I mean, and you could go in and say, well, we, we've got really good intelligence down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, and I don't, I don't doubt that we do, but at the same time, it kind of makes you wonder. It's a little fishy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and do we do we have a little more than just good intelligence? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, either way, it means we had somebody there looking. Oh yeah. Well, without question. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's interesting. I. Point being, everybody. Pay attention. Know that this is not over just because it's not in the news anymore. It didn't go as smoothly as the U.S. government wanted, and um, but they're not finished. Yeah. And if they couldn't turn, if they couldn't turn us with the news, then it's better that we don't know about it at all. Yeah. That's, there's my tinfoil hat for the, <laughs> yeah. for the day. Uh, now, my friend, after our last episode, we did all the economic stuff about money and currency. Uh, a friend of mine sent me a very long text message with a lot of questions um, about the economic stuff. And uh, 
I'm sorry, we're not addressing that tonight. We just got too many things to to do, but we will get to it. I promise we will. I think, address I think your we're going to probably do some podcasts that are pretty solidly economics at some point. Yeah, because it's it's just to me it's an interesting topic. I don't know. Maybe other people won't agree, but yeah. I mean, I I, th- I have an idea for the next one, and we'll we'll get to it at the end. All right. Uh, we'll throw in a little teaser that it'll, that'll be a surprise to Gary also. Um, <laughs> Sweet. But I did want to continue talking about the Green New Deal because we didn't really talk about the Green New Deal. We really didn't. Um, We kind of rabbit holed it into economics, yeah. which is hard to talk about the Green New Deal without talking about – if you understand economics, it's hard to talk about the Green New Deal without talking about economics because it's so counterintuitive to – I mean it just doesn't – the economics aren't there Yeah, (laughs) when you read it. So it's – well, if you have a, a recognition of like kind of the founding tenet of economics, like the thing that you have to accept for anything else to work, and yeah. and it's under any system, it's not it's not just capitalism, oh, yeah. but it, the idea of scarcity. Yeah. And uh, so I, I think that we can discuss it discuss it actually talking about the 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 proposal without yeah. just moving into a purely economic yeah purely economics discussion. We'll try. Um, yeah. So the first thing I want to say is just that, all right, so I saw a, it's not the first thing I want to say, I guess I need a little preamble. All right. Um, I was, you know, I watch France 24 in the mornings while I'm, I'm getting ready. It's, I yeah. hit my international news. That's, it's a good one yeah. relatively. Um, and, uh, so I, but I did, it was a weekend, so it wasn't like a regular news coverage they it was one of their specials that they do yeah. um was talking about energy and of course uh france is all in on the climate change concerns and and changing things oh up. yeah that's why that's, they've had right i was fixed to say that's why they're literally in the streets right now <laughs> yeah um but there was a guy they had you know some kind of i, I didn't see the beginning of it so i don't know who it was and it was it was weeks ago so i can't go back and find it because they post about 15 different videos a day so it's just too much trouble to I, like. I don't know what it would be titled, so I didn't, <laughs> I couldn't go back and find it. But uh, so I don't know who this person is. But I would absolutely address him directly if I could. Um, but he was talking about how uh, the 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 green energy. The thing that stood out to me that he said was that green energy was cheaper and more efficient, or something like that. That yeah. may not that be a was the quote, idea. But that was yeah. essentially what he was saying is that it was cheaper and more efficient than fossil fuels. I mean, I've heard people try to make that argument before, too. It is just a lie. Well, it, it, it has to be a lie, because if that was the case, we'd be doing it. Yeah. Like, and, and it wouldn't just be we would be doing it. The companies that are doing fossil fuels right now mm-hmm. would be doing it. They would transition into it. Yes. Because, I mean, they get it, and they don't want to die out. I promise you that every single fossil fuel company is investing tremendously in oh, alternative energy. Yeah, because they know if they don't that this the, the fossil fuel thing's going to come to an end. We're going to transition into something more renewable at some point, yeah. and they don't want to be on the sidelines when that happens. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true. And the the interesting thing about that is that the efficiency, not even close, not yeah. even close. Um, predictability is an issue too, but even yeah. leaving that out, if you could yeah. be certain that the sun would always shine and the wind would always blow, that you would still have an efficiency issue. Like the yeah. best of solar panels yeah. um, convert, like the best of solar panels cons- convert like 15%. Oh, really? They're like 15% efficient um, or something like that. I mean, coal's better than that. Yeah. Natural gas is way better than that. I will say this, just as kind of an aside, I was just in Florida, and they have solar panels all over Florida. They are everywhere. So, like, I remember going to Florida to Disney as a kid, and there would be orange fields everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, everywhere. Like, the closer you got to Disney, the more orange fields you saw. Mm -hmm. It's solar panels now. Literally, the same fields that were orange fields are solar panel fields now. Well, that's what we're looking. It's just to. weird. I mean, it's. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but it was strange seeing that. My uh, my grandfather was a contractor. Um, lived down there in the uh, in the East Coast uh, from Orlando. Yeah. Right. And he his house was built with their water pipes running back and forth under the roof. Nice to 
hot, so that, that that's cool how the they yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, no. It was for the hot water. Oh, really? More efficient hot water because the sun on the roof ah, would heat the water. Ah, interesting. Yeah, and I, it was. I, I'm sure it's effective as insulation as well. Actually, water is like really effective as an insulation. But yeah. um, but that's what he told me was that they that he ran the hot water lines back <laughs> and forth under the roof. Yeah. Um. So that so, so that the sun would heat the water, <laughs> and it was it was in addition to an actual to, water. Yeah. Heater, I mean, he but, didn't go without a hot water heater. Yeah. yeah. Um. That's neat though. But. Yeah, so I mean, it certainly can be used. I'm all in for it. Like anywhere you can get a consistent source of energy, I say do it. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, I think that we should be using tidal energy all over the place. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of an eyesore. It gets in the way of things. Like you get, yeah. then you run into questions of which is more important that the the energy be clean or that the environment be clean. Yeah, because um, I because imagine not, those things are not particularly good for the environment. I mean, well, they're not particularly bad for the environment either, but they're yeah. just, they're in the way. Yeah, they're a problem for the environment. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, the, the idea that it's more efficient is just like provably false. And the idea that it's cheaper, just based on the simple economic argument that you made, is, yeah. is absolutely falsifiable as Just well. absurd, yeah. But um, beyond that, and I, 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 th- I suspect that most people don't know this, yeah. uh, the US, U.S. government subsidizes green energy more than they do fossil fuels. Oh, absolutely they do. Like, yeah. by a long shot. Yeah. And um, so, like, they shouldn't be subsidizing anything. But they're, <laughs> they're subsidizing green energy, which is a much smaller share of the market. Yeah. More than they're subsidizing fossil fuels. Yeah. And... It's still more expensive <laughs> for green energy than it is for fossil fuels. Well, and green energy is great. It'll be ready when it's ready, though. Mm-hmm. It's kind of is my take on it. Like, I mean, it's when, when the when the market can support it, mm-hmm. all for it. But I, it, the whole idea of propping it up is just a, a fool's errand. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I've said for a long time. Like, do you if you want the answer? And, you know, maybe this is just the free market meat, right? But yeah. if, if you want the answer to, if you want energy solutions, the answer is prosperity. Yeah. If you get the government out of the market, let people, let people earn and innovate and generate wealth. Yeah. And first thing that'll happen is that people that are really concerned about this will stop making decisions based on, like, if, if people are prosperous, then they can make decisions based on their conscience. Yeah. Rather than their checkbook balance, yeah. right? So people, more people will start buying the more expensive energy sources. Yeah. But the more people that are buying the more expensive energy sources, the more investment is going into those energy sources, yeah. and the better and more efficient they will become. Absolutely. So the answer is prosperity. The answer is to get out of the way, not to let the government decide what is going to be the way that we move forward with energy. Yeah. And the Green New Deal specifically, like they want to convert everything. Hundred percent renewable, all at in, one time. I don't remember what the time period is. It was short, but yeah. I don't remember. Um, but they they want to convert everything, and in addition to all this other stuff that they want, and yeah. that's actually something that we should address, because I, I think that we've you know we've made the argument for why trying to convert everything to hundred percent renewable by um, government central planning is a yeah. is a bad idea. Yeah. Um, but the just the retrofitting the buildings and like all of the stuff going back to scarcity, there is a limit on the amount of labor available in this country. There is a limit on the amount of resources available. Yeah. Steel and and if you're not using fossil fuels, by the way, how do you even move all these how materials do you get around? Them there? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, but even beyond that, like you would need the entire labor force of this of this country yeah. but then you don't have people growing food and you know making refrigerators yeah. and well, everything else like that has to <laughs> the, be done yeah, yeah. um and I, I suspect and the idea that you could just take anybody and move them into these these kind of retrofitting jobs is silly anyway i suspect yeah. that you had spent the this for the bulk at least of the first you know three to maybe even ten years just training, training your workforce. The people. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, and then you got to actually do it. So, I can't imagine the time period. Like, there's no way they can get this done in 12 years. That's when yeah. we're all going to die, right? 12 years. <laughs> right. Um, well, you know, you you may as well just like suck it up and enjoy, yeah. you know, your time. And like, there's no reason to, 
to do it this way, as they said in The Simpsons, you're just ensuring that we spend our our last years using inferior products. <laughs> right. Uh, um, Damn you, paper straw. <laughs> Oh, I hate the paper straws. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I got I to gotta have my plastic straw, man. Yeah. They, the other thing is that there is a complete underestimation of the value. I mean, we're talking about the cost of these energy sources. Yeah. Um, there's a complete underestimation of the value of having a plentiful, low-cost energy source. And not just to big industry, but to the poor people. Yeah. Here's another thing that I saw on France 24. This, this I right. saw this weekend. They were going over... Um, they were covering China. They have a bunch of pastoral societies, pastoral groups that used to roam across the steppes yeah. in China that are moving into the cities. Um, and they say that they're moving into the cities because of climate change. I don't, Maybe. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I think that there's, there's a lot more of, of a draw A lot to of things city. are blamed on climate well, yeah. change. <laughs> um, so, but what they're doing is that it's making it much worse. All these pastoralists yeah. are moving into the city and their uh, their cheap, plentiful energy source is coal. Yeah. Um, so they're burning coal, and they're burning coal like they did on the steps, actually. They burned coal on the steps, too. Yeah. But on the steps, they were moving around, um, so it didn't get concentrated. Now that they're living in cities, they're all together. They're all, you know, focused uh, in, one place. in one place and burning coal, and, it's, and, and they're having all kinds of respiratory issues and so forth and so on. Yeah. So... Um, but the, you know, so what these people like the Alexandria ocasio Cortezes and, and their ilk, um, would say is that, well, we need them to start using wind power and solar power and whatever other hydroelectric power yeah. to, to generate their energy. Um, but here's the problem. If they could afford those sources, they would do it already. Immediately. Yeah. Um, if it was cheaper than coal, the reason they're burning coal is because coal is cheap. Yeah. And if they don't have the coal to burn, if you take that away from them, they don't move to green energy. They die. They freeze to death. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's nothing else they can do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of them are going to be able to make the conversion, but not not enough. Not all There's of not them. enough money there. Yeah, exactly. They don't have the wealth. And, of course, then the next answer is, well, we'll just, we'll just give them the wealth that they need. But, but, but where does that come from? Yeah. Um, it has to come from somewhere. There's, a, there's limited resources. Scarcity is... Is a truism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's always going to be there. Like it, yeah. it controls the. So uh, there was really only one other thing that I wanted to talk about, and this is, uh, I, I, yeah, I can see you tapping your phone. So I'm like, just looking. Time's up. Nah. <laughs> Stop talking. All right, all right. I'm working on it. Um, the uh, I, I did want to mention because it's, I mean, it's not exactly local to us, but it's kind of local to us, and I think it feeds into something that we need to talk about soon. Yeah. Um, and that's the, uh, I don't know how to say her name, Hoda Mutana or something Oh, there's something no like way that. I can pronounce that, so don't even go there, man. Anyway, <laughs> it's the, the ISIS wife uh, that came out of Hoover, yeah. uh, Alabama. Yeah. Um, so, and she wants to come back to the United States, and they don't want to let her back into the United States. And um, there's some question about whether she's actually a citizen or not. I don't want to get into that because I, I can't make that decision. Yeah. What I would say is that she definitely had a U.S. passport at some time. Yeah. All right. Um, to me, that means that somebody thought she was a citizen at some point. <laughs> right. Yeah. And she may have gone and joined ISIS, but that doesn't make her no longer a U.S. citizen. Yeah. Um, so what I say is this. The question is, do you let her back in or do you not let her back in? And I think that we have to let her back in. Yeah. And if you... If you want to let her back in, if, if, you, if you're going to let her back in, yeah. then if you have a problem with what she's done by going and joining ISIS, yeah. then she has, like every other American citizen, um, she has the right to due process. Yeah. So you let her back in and you try her for treason. Yeah. And I imagine if the evidence is there, it's a pretty short trial. Yeah. I mean, and I don't know if the evidence is there or not. I mean, I, I, I would imagine it is if they're so hell-bent on not letting her back in. Mm -hmm. They have to have good reason to know what she did with, when she was over there. Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, and here's the... Oh, man, I just tapped that mic. That's going to be on there. <laughs> um, I The thing that they keep talking about is how she... Now, personally, I don't see any particular... Um, crime in her going over there marrying some guy yeah. 
living in Syria and Turkey for years, marrying some other guy, you know, and being a part of the of the ISIS group um, in the sense that women are generally like the activity that women are generally allowed to perform in these kinds of like hardcore Islamic groups where she was, you know, she was a homebody. Like yeah. she's not allowed. She wasn't fighting. Yeah. She um, was definitely not allowed out of the house. Yeah. Unless I she mean, had a bomb strapped to her. <laughs> well, in the, uh, in her account, she was kept in like essentially a warehouse when she first went over there waiting for a husband. Yeah. Wow. Like that she wasn't allowed out until she got married. Yeah. Um, and, so, anyway, I, I don't see any particular crime in that. She was young. She made a bad choice. She has almost certainly suffered for it. Oh, yeah. There's um, no question about that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and if you're going to try somebody to treason for treason, you have to sh- you have to show that they provided material support. Yeah. And I think that cooking, cleaning, and, you know, getting a guy dressed in the morning doesn't really qualify. Well, <laughs> And that would be for a jury to decide. Yeah, I mean, that's my opinion. Um, but uh, the the point is that she is, if she has ever been in a U.S. A US citizen, she is still a U.S. citizen as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Um, I'd agree and with that, that she should be protected by the Constitution just like any other U.S. citizen. Yeah. And so she is um, entitled to due process. Now, this government has been ignoring that in a lot of ways for many years now. Yeah. Um, and so the other thing though, I, cause there's no reason to like get into, um, you know, Obama ordering, uh, the <laughs> drone assassination of, uh, um, yeah. of, uh, no, I can't think of his name. I can't think of his name either. I was trying to help you, and it's not yeah, there. Yeah, the first thing that came to mind was uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri, but he's like he's still out there. Uh-huh. Um, it was the guy that had been over here and was a cleric and went over, and yeah. um, and he started doing his preaching over there, and, and we blew up both him and his son. But he's a U.S. citizen yeah. and entitled to uh, due entitled process. To due process. Yeah. Like, you can't... The government can't order the assassination of a U.S. citizen. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's... It's not legal. Well, like, they can do it, just not legally. It's, okay. And, and so that's the legal. question of who's going to stop them. Because, yeah. I mean... Well, but the other part of that is that what they're saying is that she uh, encouraged violence and so forth through these posts on Twitter. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of this kind of argument going around. And I think that she has every right to go out there and say whatever it is she wants to say on any social media. Freedom of speech is messy, man. I mean, it just is. If, if, if you believe in free speech... It's it's a it's a messy ordeal, mm-hmm. but but we don't have it to talk about the weather. I mean that's just what it is, right? You know, right? And it's the most fundamental of our rights. As it far is. As I'm oh, absolutely. Um, and so that's something that I do want to talk about in detail with yeah. some examples of what's going on. Yeah, because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on right mm-hmm. now with that. A lot, a lot of, a lot of. We could lose this right pretty soon, like it's on the horizon. So all of you listening, start thinking about why you think yeah. free speech is important. Yeah. And uh, we'll tell you why we think it is in hopefully a week. Um, so yeah. <laughs> there's something to talk about is that, I, like, I don't understand how this works. We're trying to do this every two weeks. Um, somehow yeah. we can't get schedules to come together, even though both of us make our own schedules to varying degrees. Uh, and we had so much to talk about that I kept thinking, like, ah, oh, all this stuff is going by. We're missing our opportunity to talk about this stuff, and maybe we just have to let it go. Um, but I would love to meet weekly. I'd love to do this weekly. Yeah. But we can't seem to pull off every two weeks. <laughs> it's tough. Effectively. We're, we're, we're both busy people, man. We have a lot of res- – I have a lot of responsibilities. I know you do, too. Yeah. It's it's just kind of the way of life. But we're going we're gonna to get a routine, and, and we're going to nail it down to once a week. So here's a question for you. At some point. Um, out there. Would you rather the possibility of more content without a regular schedule? Yeah. So that we could just, like, whenever we have the time, the two of us are available, that we could get together and do a podcast? Yeah. I mean, it's not like we do a whole lot of prep on these. I mean, we're both oh. following all this stuff all the time anyway. Yeah, I mean, well, and that's kind of it. Like, we're, I'm always tuned in. I mean, I follow mm-hmm. media stuff, like, 
most people follow sports, right. especially this time of year when there's not a whole lot of sports I follow <laughs> on. A little different during football season, but not a lot. Yeah, I mean, this I, is this is always my number one. Yeah. So I even even in the one season where there's a team that I watch, I yeah. still follow this more closely oh, than anything else. Absolutely, and me too. So like we, any time that we can get together. We can have something to talk about. Yeah. Oh, and we've got uh, most of the equipment put together at this point where we can do these from about anywhere yeah. as well. As also well. True. So also we may true. be testing that out in the future. Yeah. And so we probably will, hopefully. I, I hate to make any promises about the schedule, but um, <laughs> we have the uh, uh, Alabama Libertarian Party convention this weekend. Um, we have Super excited. talked about doing a uh, a bonus episode for you guys uh you know like a a road trip with the liberty mike um <laughs> as we head up to Gonna central alabama awesome. to to do this thing uh also we have uh lined up um a very special interview up there this weekend so uh it's not going to come out immediately but we're we're going to have we're going to have like a really important figure in the libertarian party um in uh, foreign policy yes. to, to sit down with us for a little bit and give us an interview, which I'm really, really excited about. And so we'll have that out to you soon. Um, we are also talking about doing another interview, as we mentioned before, um, with our, uh, our friend that's local that ran for office that's involved in the lawsuit with the state over um, – Ballot access. And I think that's going to be a good one. I'd kind of like for both of y'all to kind of talk about kind of what y'all went, the things y'all experienced during y'all's campaigns. Like how how much trouble it was just to get to on get the ballot. On the ballot. I mean, yeah. I think that's something that, that we need to kind of break down and discuss because I, I think a lot of people just don't know that. They don't realize how hard it is in the state to do any, to make any kind of change. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of the reason that things are the way they are. I mean, a lot of people complain about the way we do things in Alabama, and there's a reason for that. It's because the the mechanisms in place make it so that m- normal people can't just get on the ballot. Yeah. If you're not a Republican or a Democrat, it's very difficult to get on the ballot in the state. And, and even if you are one, like getting through the party minutia would be and is tough. But you get a lot of support and you're you automatically have a spot on the ballot. Like the Republican as, Democrat as a, parties have as a spots Republican, on the ballot. But the mm-hmm. but their parties, particularly the Republican Party, is notorious for picking who they want their candidates to well, be. It's not like you if you decided tomorrow, I'm gonna be a Republican and run as a Republican. Mm-hmm. You couldn't just start going to meetings and do that. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean well, and we'll, we've seen that firsthand. Yeah. We'll we'll address that with Matt. We'll oh, yeah. we'll have some fun he's, talking with he's, that. He's 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 the one to talk discuss that with. So um, again, though, if you guys would like to have the possibility for more content with less consistency, yeah, let us know. Yeah, because we're we're willing to give that a try too. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll have an episode out, like a regular episode out next week, and uh, we're going to try and get a bonus episode out that's going to be, like I said, the uh, road trip with the Liberty Mike that we'll we'll just we'll mic ourselves up on the way up there and we'll we'll cut and paste the good parts. Yeah. Um, It'll be fun. And uh, and and like big interview, really good interview coming up. I hope it'll be a good interview. I know that the, the subject is a good interview, but oh man, if, if as long as we get to sit down with him, it will be amazing. Yeah, the truth like, is, we could probably just get him talking and let him talk for twenty minutes. Oh, It'd be fine. It'd be amazing. Um, so uh, and then of course you can you can find us on Facebook. Absolutely. On, we are now available on iTunes. I forgot to mention that last time. Oh, we didn't mention that. And it yeah. was such a big deal. Yeah. We are available on iTunes now, so you can subscribe to us there, leave reviews, etc. Hopefully yeah. positive. Um, and uh, yeah, so Facebook, thelibertymike.com, and iTunes. And I'm trying to get us on to uh, available on Stitcher as well, which is nice. another podcast distribution thing. And um well, we're, we're going to try and get ourselves out there as much as we can. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, we'll be back in whenever we Couple can get it. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> yeah, when, whenever we can get it scheduled to appear again. Um, yeah. That we're both in the same place at the same time and have access to a computer. And uh, so we'll, we'll see you guys then. Have a great night. Ciao. Later.